How do you make outstanding prints? How can you never get saddle sore? And how can you shock a monk? Last week's great unanswered how. How do you do this? Do you know, I think you're so clever with cards. With really great are. difficulty is the answer to that how, yeah. Toppy. With great... How do you do it? Come well, on. last week I asked you to practice, because yeah. it's, it's all to do with dexterity and familiarity. I, I'm yeah. pretty good at it, look. I mean, well, I'm pretty good at it. I've practiced all week, Toppy, and it, it's still... Keep... No, how you do you do it? Well, you need to be more calm and casual with your cards. You need calm. to sort of understand the casual. waiting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that Toppy, sort of thing. Yeah. may I have a go on your cards, please? Yeah, Fred, certainly. You don't mind? Calm, no, Fred. casual, yeah, Fred. dexterous, mm. understand the mm. waiting and just drop them like that. <laughs> <laughs> you need to have your cards strung together. That's how. <laughs> now, how can you see all the colours of the rainbow on your TV screen? Well, a TV screen is made up of lots and lots of dots of light. And each dot itself is made up of tiny beams of red, blue and green light. And if you take a magnifying glass at home and put it in front of your television and have a look through that, you'll see lots of these dots and each there being made up of red, blue and green. Yeah, but on my telly at home you get all sorts of other colours, yellows and purples and... Absolutely, and every colour that you see is made up of a combination of the three I told you about, of red, blue and green. So is it the same as mixing paint? Well, no, mixing paint is entirely different. What we're going to be doing is mixing light. Are you ready for a colour quiz? Oh, I love a colour quiz, me. I'll show you something very interesting. Now here I have beams of red, blue and green light. So here comes the first question. Let's start with red light. Now, what's going to happen if I add green light to that? You'd get brown. No, Fred, you'd get purple, Carol. You think purple. Let's add the green. And what do you get when they cross over? You get yellow light. Oh, gosh. Which is quite strange, because it's nothing like mixing paints at all. This is mixing light. And if I put my hand in front, you can see the shadows behind. Where I'm shielding the green light, you get a red shadow. And where I'm shielding the red light, you get a green shadow. Yep. Next question is, what happens if we mix just red light with blue light? Oh, you get purple this time, uh, definitely. But, but a deep purple. A deep purple, let's mix it. And let's see, red and blue light mixed together. Give this gorgeous sort of mild lavender effect in the centre. And now here comes the crux. What happens if I add green to those? What do you think will happen? I think you'd get a sort of turquoise. No, no, you get black, Fred. Black. <laughs> you get black. Let's add the green, and where they mix, you see a beautiful white light. And if I walk in front of that, casting my shadow across, you see a beautiful symphony of colour behind me. And when you see white light on your TV screen, the bits of white on your TV, what you're seeing is a certain combination of red, blue and green lights. And that is how you can see every colour under the rainbow on your TV. Outstanding. And how do you make outstanding prints? This is a how for the total incompetent, the ham-fisted artist, someone like me. Mm -hmm. It's just to really make something that really is artistically outstanding. Ordinary, simple, common or garden rubber stamp. Well, they're good, Fred, but they're hardly outstanding. No, but you could apply them to your own personalised stationery. So you'd achieve something like that, Fred, Big House, VIP Is street. that your address? That's right, yes. <laughs> Good? Like that? Hardly outstanding, no, Fred, really. Not really. really? Mm. Well, perhaps you could make it even more outstanding and more personalised with just a little bit slightly more ornate rubber stamp work. Mm. I'll put a nice F on the front there, like so. That's better, That's isn't pretty. it? That's pretty. That is yes. pretty, yes. yes. Now, now you're beginning to try. Somewhere. And perhaps so that everybody knew it was me, a big brain. A small brain. A small brain. <laughs> alongside 
There, that's better. Uh, Good. Mm. Hardly outstanding. outstanding. Oh, dear. Well, perhaps I could add some outstanding powder. And it really is. You've got to treat this stuff like gold dust because, in fact, it is gold dust. Fred, that looks a complete mess now. It does at the moment. Mm. But if I get rid of the powder, put it back, that's better, isn't it? Mm. Oh, that's, yeah, it's mm. a bit dull, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, perhaps what I need some heat, some outstanding heat. Any ideas, Toby? Um, well, it's luckily, Fred, I managed to bring me toaster in to work with me today. Excellent. There you go. Just what we needed. Now, if we put this over the heat of the toaster, watch what happens suddenly to my gold. Can you see? I was using oh. embossing powder, and when you apply heat to it, the powder rises on the paper, giving a lovely, slightly raised, golden effect. Or, of course, you could use absolutely any colours you wanted. That's more outstanding. That isn't is it? definitely outstanding. Definitely outstanding. Yes. Outstanding stationery yes. and outstanding envelopes as well. For instance, one that you may well send to the Prime Minister. It's got the brain on it and it <laughs> looks sufficiently ornate. Or maybe one to the President of the United States of America. Again, quite outstanding and full of razzle-dazzle. He'd razzle -dazzle. like that. <laughs> and one to a dear friend, like Gareth. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> and that's how you make outstanding prints. How can you never get saddle sore? Well, in terms of comfort, if you ride a bike, you'll know that the most important part is the saddle. Now, uh, saddle technology has come a long way since the introduction of uh, the initial bike here. This is Fred's bike, believe it or not, and <laughs> it's got a perfectly good leather saddle. Now, a leather saddle is good because it moulds the shape of your bum and it's very, very comfortable. There's nothing wrong with that saddle at all. That served me man and boy for 115 years. <laughs> yes, Fred, you see, it's good for Fred, but it would be no good if he loaned the bike to me because it's the shape of Fred's bum, this saddle. Now, for me, that would be very uncomfortable. Now, they've experimented with new saddle technology for some time. In fact, in the 60s, you could buy um, bikes with vinyl saddles, which were hopeless, really, because they're hard, they're waterproof, that's a good thing, but never moulded to the shape of anybody's bum and they were hot and sweaty, no good. But at last, there is a new kind of bike saddle that's very, very comfortable, and this is it. Watch this. If I press this saddle, you'll see why. It's got loads and loads of give, and it doesn't take long before it moulds the shape of my bum, or indeed the bum of anybody who's riding this bike. How does it do this? Well, the answer is that the seat is filled with high-tech gel. If I squeeze that there, you can see this gel will actually retain the shape of the bum of the person who's riding the bike, which means you can loan it to anybody and it still remains comfortable. Now, in the, the true tradition of how, it's good to put this to the test. Hold on, hold on. If you're going to do a test, you'll do it on the hard saddle. That's the only fair test. Definitely. Thank you, Fred. And how are you going to test it, anyway? Um, well, um, Jones Engineering have built this rather <laughs> remarkable test track, which recreates the effect of the most potholed road. Gareth, it's a ladder. Yes, I know. But I'm now going to ride this ladder on a bike with a conventional hard racing saddle to show how uncomfortable a saddle can be. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this. Was that comfortable then? Uh, not in the slightest. But now I shall put it to the test with the new high tech silicon saddle. and see how far we get. Hopefully, the theory says that it should smooth out the bumps and I should enjoy my ride over the roughest of roads. Here we go. Ah. And the great advantage of this new high-tech saddle is, being as it's uh, this gel, it's actually warm in winter and cool in the summer as well. And using a high-tech gel, that's how you can never get saddle sore. How did the sucker make a comeback? Up until the 19th century, the leech was regarded as an important aid to medicine. The leech is a blood sucker. Uh. And in days gone by, if people had a stomach ache, a leech was applied to their stomach to draw off blood. If they had a toothache, a leech was applied to their gum to suck their blood. Uh. In that case, of course, a piece of string was attached to the leech in case the unfortunate patient 
happen to oh, swallow it. Oh, Ingenious creatures, leeches. In medieval times, physicians believe the body was split up into four equal parts, one of which was blood. Therefore, if you were poorly, it's possible you had too much blood, and that's where the leech came in to simply suck off some of the blood. They didn't hurt, I'm told, but they do leave, and did leave behind, the symbol of a modern automobile. <laughs> How does the leech do it? I think we need to see a leech in action, as it were. You're not now, for this, on, well, not me personally, because I'm the physician. For this, we need a volunteer, uh -oh. a patient, a brave fellow, Toppy. Now, would you? Would you mind? In You're the interest. Put a leech on me. Yes, in the interest of science, I'm going to apply a leech to your arm if you don't mind. On my arm. Honestly, I'm told he won't hurt you. Why and are you wearing fact, gloves then? Because I'm the physician, oh. and in fact, he does have his own inbuilt antiseptic, so he oh. won't do you any harm. Go on, lad, have a bite. And let's see what happens. Uh. Oh, yeah, that's tingling. Is it tingling? Yeah, ah, yeah. You yeah. can feel it. Yeah, it's like a nettle sting. Well, we'll just leave him there for a second while I just finish off the how and tell you how he made his comeback in the 20th century. Ooh. Because a young boy called Guy had his ear severed. It is extremely complex for surgeons to stick an ear back on once it's become separate from the head, but the surgeons in this case were successful. But then the blood in the boy's ear began to clot. Now, leeches have an anti-clotting agent. Leeches were applied to the boy's ear, and fairly soon afterwards, the circulation was restored, and his ear was saved. Gareth, how well, are you doing with this, this sucker? This guy's um, swelling up. I reckon he's had about three pints already. Let's oh, take him off you now. Tingling. Is he going to let go? Yes, he will let go. Will he? Yes. Don't ah, break him in half. Ah. Oh, he's still on there. There we are. There we are. Oh. Well. You're safe, and that's how the sucker made a comeback. Oh, I'm glad that's over. Poor Gareth. Now, how can you shock a monk? The mind boggles. <laughs> it does indeed. Well, this is a how all about static electricity. And you can create static just by doing this with a balloon, put it over some pieces of paper, and you can see how they leap towards it. Now, if I did that for quite some time, all the electricity stored on the balloon would leak out. But there isn't really a lot stored there to start with. To create a lot of static, we need a machine similar to this. Now, what will happen is the disks will go round, electricity will be stored, and eventually will be discharged between these two balls at the top. But for this, I need a labourer, someone who can put a bit of back-breaking work You need a exercise. rough, tough, brawny sword for some hard work. I Gareth, do. get over there, please. <laughs> oh, not again. <laughs> now, what I want you to do, Gareth, is turn the handle at the back and then watch what happens. Come quickly, on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Harder. Can you see the sparks flying yes. between the two balls? And that's because the electricity is leaking out in a spectacular way. But we don't really have to waste the electricity in that way. We can store it. If you take this jar, Gareth, and put the top of the jar next to the ball over there, the electricity will be stored within the jar and it will only leak out when something or somebody touches the top but again. what's this got to do with monks? Mm. Brother Fred, Brother Gareth, please come with me to a monastery. The year 1742, the place, France, Abbot Nullet, that's me, was conducting experiments with his brother monks. Brother Fred, please touch the jar. Touch that? Yes. Ow! <laughs> Some more electricity, I think. Another Brother. little experiment. This time I'd like you to touch it again, Brother Fred. More electricity, please. More electricity. I'm not touching it. Get him to touch it. All right, then hold Hurts. hands together. Hold hands, Brother Gareth, please touch. Ow! <laughs> Some more electricity. This is extremely interesting. Brothers, please help us. That's fine, I'm going brothers. nowhere. I'm going on the end of the line. I'm uh, not getting anywhere near that thing. OK, now if we could all join hands together and I shall touch the electricity. Ow! How did that get me all the way down here? Raise your robes, brothers. But they've all got sandals on. And you haven't? No. No, we have leather sandals on, and leather does not conduct electricity. It doesn't allow it to leak through. And the real Abbot Nole did exactly the same experiment with 300 monks all lined up together. And the reason that it passed through your feet is that it leaks through to Earth, and that is why. Brother Fred got the shock. We were all right, and that is... Oh, oh, oh no! no. Oh. Really hurt, that did. Good.
good because the leeches did too.